A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. To whom can you liken me as an equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. He leads out their army and numbers them, calling them all by name. By his great might and the strength of his power, not one of them is missing. Why, O Jacob, do you say and declare, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Do you not know or have you not heard? The Lord is the eternal God, creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint nor grow weary, and his knowledge is beyond scrutiny. He gives strength to the fainting, for the weak he makes vigor abound. Though young men faint and grow weary, and youths stagger and fall, they that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar as with eagles' wings. They will run and not grow weary, walk and not grow faint. The word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Oh, oh bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, my soul. He pardons all our iniquities. He heals all our ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. Bless the Lord, my soul. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. How often we are labored and burdened and tired and weary, particularly this time of year when we perhaps will increase the intensity of our activities and getting ready for the holidays. There's so much to do, and we can easily put ourselves into a frenzy. A British bishop and author named Stephen Cottrell wrote a book of daily devotions for Advent, and the book's title is Do Nothing, Christmas is Coming. So imagine that, to do nothing. You know, sometimes we think that Christmas can only happen if we end up getting into a flurry of activities. There's so much to do, whether that be shopping for Christmas or getting meals and baking and Christmas cards and parties and everything else. And by the time Christmas arrives, we're 
we are exhausted, we're just kaput, so to speak, and then we really can't celebrate the season the way we really should. Our Lord wants us to rest in him. He tells us that very clearly in our gospel today. He says, you will find rest for yourselves. So it's hard to imagine in our own human minds just simply doing nothing. And yet that's what the Lord is bidding us to do. He, he doesn't want us to think that we're the ones that can make it all happen. You really think about it, our world didn't do anything at the birth of our Savior. That moment in time came completely unexpected. Certainly the people were waiting for that great day when the Messiah would appear, but they were looking in all the wrong places and doing all the wrong things. God in his eternal wisdom he allows it to happen as he wants it to happen. And he doesn't need us to make it happen. And he wants to remind us of the same thing in our salvation journey in this life, in this world. We don't make it happen. God makes it happen. But we simply have to connect with God. And that's why Jesus says, come to me all you who are burdened, all you who work so hard and are overwhelmed by the things of this life and this world, to simply come to me and I will give you rest. God indeed is the source of all goodness and strength. And so we need to continually remind ourselves that's only in God that we rest, that our hearts will rest in thee. And so one of our challenges of Advent as these holidays approach is to maybe try to put aside some of those things that maybe we think are necessary, but maybe we need to look in other places for the quiet, the calm, the rest, the rest in Jesus. As we stand in awe of your power to create and make all things new, Father, we place our prayers before you. For Pope Francis, may he continue to inspire us to make joyful proclamations of God's law of love and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For all civic leaders, may they have the strength to make wise choices that benefit the people they serve. Let us pray. For the millions of refugees throughout the world, for all the children whose lives have been uprooted, and for their parents, let us pray. For our catechists and teachers, may the joy of the gospel fill their hearts as they lead and teach us God's ways, let us pray. And we pray for all who have died, for those who will die today, and for all our loved ones. And especially in this Mass, we remember the repose of the soul of John Musa and also the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Monsignor Hubert J. Kleiber in 1981. May, there, may they have friends and relatives around them to comfort them and offer them the hope and eternal life. Let us pray. God, you sent your Son to all, Hear our prayers for those who might be weary and find life burdensome, and for ourselves. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>